everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Lana Reed, and today, today on this day, I have with me a gentleman by the name of Alonzo Roberts. He is a personal coach. He's out here in this world teaching people about good credit, bad credit, good debt, bad debt, all that financial literacy stuff that we need, especially in our communities. I'm looking forward to learning more about all that he does to help others. But first and foremost, as I always do, I like to take a quick moment to pause say thank you for making time for me today. Time is a gift. Once we give it, we can't give it back. And with that, Mr. Roberts, welcome welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I've seen your growth. I admire your growth and I admire your resilience to keep going and keep pushing. That's what being an entrepreneur is all about. So much love and much respect to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to start... Uh, Because I mentioned that you do some stuff that I really think is important to, um, especially our communities, our Black communities, um, and you teach financial literacy to others. And you mentioned on uh, your post, I was as I was preparing for today, I was going through your uh, your Instagram, and one of your posts was about um, the blame game. And I hear this a lot of times in the community. We like to say the reason why we have years of bad credit or we we can't save or, you know, we have all this bad debt is because nobody taught us. Nobody taught us how to be literate with our finances. Um, And I get it. Right. You know, maybe in the past, nobody did. But today with the world, with information and all this stuff, people like you out in this world. What do we, we start to say to people like? Okay, nobody taught you, but here's some steps that you can take to get the knowledge that you need. How do we start to respond to these people who are always saying, nobody taught me? Well, I was starting out by responding to them individually by saying, um, you're going to go through an age of adolescence, mm-hmm. right? Once you go through the age of adolescence, you know, they become, you know that comes with a lot of responsibility. Um, and what I would say is, look at your, look at your current um, circumstances and everybody that's in your life. Look at what they have done with their debt and their liabilities, and then you learn from that. The mistakes, the 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 era of the blame game, you blaming someone else for what's going on in your current life right now, is really non-existent and null, and null and void because we do live in the information, the era of information. So um, you're going to grow up, you're going to become an adult, and you know that it comes with making adult-based decisions. We need food, shelter, water, clothing, and transportation. We know those things come with um, the ability for you to purchase those things are going to be related to your name and everything that's attached to your name. So you cannot make, you can't take the blame game when you see as you're growing up that in order to acquire these things, you're going to need the the key necessities of survival. Knowing that you got to utilize your name and leverage your name to acquire these things, there's no room for excuses anymore. And we live in an age of information where Right now, somebody can tell you how to repair your entire credit score in 15, minute, 15 seconds by looking at a TikTok video. Mm. So it's, it's, it's no, the era of blaming somebody else for the lack of knowledge right now is pretty much non-existent. And if you are still blaming someone, you have yet to really figure yourself out. So that's what I would say. You cannot, we cannot blame anyone anymore. Okay, great, great. Like I said, you know, it's just so puzzling to me because I walk around, oh, you know, I, I'm this way because my daddy, um, you know, but I said, it's different now. You have all this information on how to get ahead. You don't have to be living that way. Um, but I, you, you touched on something real quick. And, and this is another thing you mentioned. I, I want to get into, um, and you mentioned liabilities and, and you have a whole segment on assets versus liabilities. And, um, you know, I tend to think of a liability like a car, you know, buying a brand new car. Once you drive it off the lot, it loses its value. So it becomes a liability. And then I also talk about liabilities when it pertains to relationships. You know, if you don't pick the right people in your life, they can be a liability or they can be an asset. But you um, were breaking it down on your Instagram in kind of different terms and how we um, in our communities, we tend to, we're tending to look at assets and liabilities um, that's not really healthy. Could you kind of retouch on that again for me? Well, the assets and liabilities um, abilities conversation in our community is getting kind of out of hand and it's running very rampant. Um, what tends to happen with the assets and liabilities discussion is you have individuals from the community that um, go out and become successful and they come back and they teach the things that made them successful. Mainly is someone that's getting involved in the real estate or something to do with stocks. 
So they come back and they preach, the, they preach a sermon in our community like um, real estate and stocks is the ultimate asset, mm-hmm. right? The ultimate asset class. But what I would tell, tell that individual is this, an asset is only an asset the way you utilize it. You know, liability is only, it's only a liability the way you utilize and leverage it as well. Mm-hmm. What's, what's an asset to you may not be an asset to me. What's a liability to you may, may not be a liability to me. I want to further expound upon the real estate market because a lot of times we get so caught up in wholesaling real estate or rehabbing houses. A lot of times the reason why people um, place as the word asset next to next to real estate is because of the monetary gain that you always supposed to um, acquire. Mm-hmm. Right. Somebody done sat in a room somewhere before a lot before me and you were probably even born. A group of people sat in the room and they had to figure out a, um, a vehicle for their money to grow, right? They had to come up with a, a, a set rule and say, hey, we need somewhere to park our money and our money can um, come back tenfold and it can grow. So individuals way before me and you, they set up these terms called assets and liabilities and they already have cho- pick and chosen what's going to be considered an asset or the liability. If you got a lot of men with a lot of money, they say, hey, this is the new asset class and they start putting all their money in it. Of course, people are going to follow them and begin to do the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. But the thing we got to realize about assets and liabilities, you just can't look at monetary gain, capital gain, capital losses, and monetary losses. It's emotional uh, loss as well. It could be emotional liability. You may tell someone, hey, go out and be a wholesaler, go out and and rehab this house, but it may take them through a, 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 a roller coaster and now they have emotional gain and they have time loss. So mm. that, that whole experience has become a liability because you don't lost a lot of time, which we can't get back. That's the most vital thing on earth is time because you cannot, you cannot get time back. Now you have emotional loss and emotional liability. So you look at, they look at these things as from a monetary point of view and from a capital gains and a capital loss point of view. And I will also touch on the, the, the stock market too. Because a lot of a lot of individuals in our community, they get invested in stocks and they do options and they do um, you know stock option trading and then they come back and say you need to be investing in stock bonds and all this stuff in mutual mm-hmm. funds, right? The, the the problem I have with trying to tell someone they need to put their money in that particular asset class is because if you look at what happened not too long ago with Bitcoin, now Bitcoin is considered one of the new asset classes. Mm-hmm. When, when Elon Musk announced that Tesla was going to be accepting Bitcoin, Bitcoin's value started to run through the roof. Now watch this. When Elon Musk then announced that Tesla was not going to be accepting Bitcoin anymore, it plummeted. Now, if this is supposed to be an asset class, how can one person mm. control the fluctuation in the volatility of that particular asset. If I had a hundred, a hundred uh, K invested in Bitcoin, and let's say I was sleeping, Elon Musk tweeted out that they're no longer going to sell Bitcoin, and the price plummeted. I could have waken up with fifty percent of my portfolio gone. This has also happened in the stock market. Somebody can say, "Hey, we're not purchasing um, this anymore. We're not. We're taking our money out of this." And next thing you know, everything plummets. So when you look at assets and liabilities, the main reason why I try to, why I, I spoke about this is to spark the idea and get people to start thinking, is this, are these things, these certain vehicles where we're supposed to park our money, really assets and liabilities organically and naturally, or has someone sat in a room that has a lot of money, a, a, group, a certain group of men, right? that has a lot of money and said, we need to figure out somewhere to park our money. And then we got to convince the entire world that they need to follow suit, gotcha. right? The, the, the meeting at Jekyll Island, if you know anything about, you mm-hmm. say you're from the South, the meeting at Jekyll Island shaped years ago, before way before my time, still is still shaping our society today. Mm-hmm. There's meetings that's going on behind closed doors that's dictating the way that consumers are going to spend and invest their money. But the ultimate thing I want somebody to get out the assets versus liabilities discussion is the fact that someone can tweet and ruin your whole portfolio, whether it's cryptocurrency or regular stocks, you should then think to yourself, 
wait a minute, maybe I should not be investing in those type of so-called assets and whatever liabilities. Maybe I am the ultimate asset, mm. right? I'm the ultimate asset. If I learn how to think for myself, become a logical, rational thinker, then what it boils down to is my decision-making skills to go out and put my money somewhere and make it do what it needs to do for myself and my family. Mm. So really, you are the ultimate asset. If you if gotcha. you use your if you think the right way, become a logical, rational thinking human being, and make logical and rational decision-making skills based upon your observations of life, then you become the ultimate asset. So they, they're trying to get people away from believing that they're the asset and investing in the things that they are labeling the asset. Because right now, um, some things going on on Capitol Hill and they're coming out with a new asset class as we speak. Wow. Wow. So would it be, you know, when you say that we are the asset, would it be better to focus on what some of us are doing entrepreneurially? entrepreneurially, like, you know, let, let me open up a bakery, let me open up a car wash, let me get a laundry mat. Are those considered assets now? Or how does that? Um, my logical point of view is this right here. Any, anytime you're taking control of your outcome or your situation by um, trying to develop a, a business or organization to feed your family, your friends and develop a legacy. I label it as an asset. Gotcha. Now, the way you get there is is different, mm -hmm. right? Um, the you have a I, this my, my philosophy, my personal philosophy. Like this is not this is just my view of my opinion. You have a divine you have a divine right to take control of your likeness. You have a divine right to do what you love doing, mm -hmm. right? So for me, being an entrepreneur is me taking control of my divine right. That's all I'm doing. I'm taking control of the way the universe was constructed, mm -hmm. right? I take my, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing my divine right, right? I'm accepting my divine right, you know, walking in favor of my divine right. So that's why I say, if you're going to, it's your divine right to take control of your likeliness. And if you want to start a business, I encourage, I, I encourage starting a business, but I also encourage making sure you have a strategy, right? Have a plan. Because we know the rat race is real. Mm -hmm. You can get caught and trapped in a rat race. And if you do something the wrong way, you could further pin yourself down in the rat race, but always have some type of strategy and some type of plan. But sometimes desire trumps all of it. Gotcha, gotcha. Good points, good points. Now, when we're talking about entrepreneurship and going into business, um, you know, there's this concept of personal credit and business credit, good debt, bad debt. Um, and I, what comes to mind is like Spike Lee, you know, when he got his start, he, he put his first film on his personal credit card and that's how he got his start. Uh, how, how should you, I mean, because there's a whole bunch of myths around this. Do you, you blend in your personal credit with your business credit? Is that something that stands on its own? Is it, is it intertwined or how do they all play with each other? Well, once again, I always like to give, give a disclaimer that this is my personal um, point of view and my logical um, output when it comes to this right here. Um, the personal credit and the business credit, um, that decision is going to become, is, is, is solely going to be predicated upon your desire to achieve, right? Your desire to achieve is going to, is, you're going to make that decision based upon that. So I will give you my example. Um, the reason why I came out teaching financial literacy it's because financial literacy is the ultimate equalizer. Um, Credit Bidding Academy is one of my companies that's under Alonzo Roberts and Mentor Enterprises. Mm -hmm. It's one of my companies. It's my financial literacy based side, right? Because it is the ultimate equalizer. Now we know we have a lot of injustice um, in, in, in this, this current society that we live in. We know that we don't have to get into that. But it's one thing I do know is that when it comes to the financial system, it is the ultimate equalizer if you can position yourself the right way. If you can build your credit and you accumulate the right data points, you can literally get whatever you want. I use this strategy to build excellent credit and I accumulated high limit credit cards. I fired my boss and I started my entrepreneurship journey. I was also building business credit at the same time. So what I do is, to answer your question, I do mix mine together. Okay. The reason why I'm able to do that because my desire trumps the thought of going in debt. Mm -hmm. 
it trumps it. So your your decision making skills are, are, are going to come from what you can see, not what you can feel, mm -hmm. what you can see without having right now. So if you can already see the vision, you your your desire will, will trump that. So I see no issue with leveraging your personal credit to start a business as long mm -hmm. as you can see the vision and you know you're trying to build a legacy. Gotcha. I do not, I have no issue with it, but that's that's not advice because everyone does not have the desire. If you don't have the desire, then it may not be a good idea for you to leverage your personal credit cards to build a business because you don't have the desire to even see it through. Mm, gotcha, good point, good point. Now go into what is the difference between good debt and bad debt? Oh uh, man, so we have been um, institutionalized and we have been taught that the only acceptable debt really is um, medical debt, um, vehicle debt, and mortgage debt. Like that's what's acceptable. That's the only thing that's acceptable. Anything outside of that is frowned upon. To go back to the example, taking your personal credit card and building a business is not advice people give out. People advise you to get a good job Go get, go, go get you a vehicle, go get you a home, right? With a white picket fence and live the American dream. That's that's the moral of society, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people play into that mm -hmm. very well. Um, what I, how I look at it is this. I always reverse engineer what successful in, individuals do. That's how I, you know, that's one of my ways I continue to move in this realm and be successful. Mm -hmm. Because success leaves clues. So I see the ones that are successful and I reverse engineer it. I say that to say this. It's, two, it's three top companies in America that we utilize every day. Walmart, Amazon, and Apple. Mm -hmm. These companies earn billions of dollars. But also, the average thinking individual would not think that although these companies earn billions of dollars, they're also billions of dollars in debt. Now, the a logical thinking individual knows that, hey, yeah, these companies are leveraging other people's money mm. to build and expand their enterprises. So I say, you know what? It's a such thing as good debt if you're leveraging that debt to build legacy. Gotcha. So I'm an advocate for the good debt, right? A lot of people don't talk about good debt because they can't, they can't um, fathom the thought of, going into debt to build a business, but all of your successful, all of your multi-billion dollar enterprises are going into debt, building billions. Then you just have to manage the debt. Mm -hmm. It's called leverage. Never if you learn the game of leverage, then you will have a paradigm shift when it comes to um, the way you look at debt and the way it comes to building a business, right? A lot of individuals, after they listen to um, man, your conversation, they might say, hey, you know what? I never looked at, looked at it that way. All this time I was thinking that I had to go borrow money, um, get a business loan just to build a business. But personal credit is business credit. Mm -hmm. Good point. That's one thing I teach in my financial literacy course. Personal credit is business credit. Leverage your, mm -hmm. leverage your personal credit if you have the desire to, to go out and build a legacy. Mm -hmm. Just do it. But but what you mentioned earlier with a strategy, though, you just I, I mean, a lot of people are uh, what be comical here, here for a minute. You know, sometimes you see the, the 50 year old, you know, he's like, I got my mixtape. I'm going to leverage my personal credit, you know, and I'm a, I'm a pop. I mean, but we have to have a strategy. It has to be realistic here. Um, I want to give that disclaimer. <laughs> it got to be realistic. But uh, like I say, a desire trumps a lot of people. Desire <laughs> trumps. A lot of situations and circumstances that uh and a lot of roadblocks that mm -hmm. have the right desire, you know what I'm saying? Uh some things are, you know what I'm saying, some things may be ill-advised, like that may be an ill-advised way, you know what I'm saying? But like I say, desire always trump um obstacles. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now you mentioned uh quite a few times building a legacy, and you know, I think that's one of the things that uh becomes a concern, especially when you you become a parent. Um, how to build a legacy or, and part of that legacy is teaching your child how to stand on their own two feet. Now, because you to, do teach financial literacy, do you have any suggestions on how a parent can start 
as young, because sometimes, especially in the black community, we send our kids out into this world, leave the nest and they have no clue what to do. How do we start teaching kids young, you know, how to be financially successful? Um, you know, a lot of times um, kids don't do as we say, they do as we do. Mm-hmm. But I have, um, I have a five-year-old and I have a four-month-year-old right now. You know what I'm saying? And my five-year-old, what I'm, because, you know, we, we learn from my kids. I know I'm not teaching you, but we learn from my kids. And the teach, the best way to teach financial literacy to um, any particular age group so I can make sure that I, I really refine my ass, like any particular like age you want to, you want to say we may should start doing that. Like you want to highlight an age, you want to throw out an age like mm. like twelve and yeah. up, something like that. Yeah. Um, it's always going to be leading by your actions, right? They're not going to do as you say; they're going to do as you do. So when you start to, when kids start to ask for things, like this, like this is some of the, one of the things I'm gonna do. Like my son is five, but when kids come of age, they start asking. They start asking for stuff, right? And they start seeing that maybe they're getting more than the next, the next kid, in the, and maybe they're getting more than their neighbor. And they're going to start asking one day. They're going to start realizing that, you know, daddy, you know, we, we, we kind of got more, um, more of this and more of that. And our vehicles are a little bit nicer and our house is a little bigger and things like that. You know, um, why is that? You know what I'm saying? And if they don't ask me, I will, I will tell my, my son to observe that, to observe that and observe this. Now ask me some questions about it. Mm. That's when I will begin to teach my son that financial literacy is decision making skills, right? Everything comes back to your decision making skills. When when you decide to take responsibility to put your name on something, you have made a decision. Now, if you uphold and upkeep and be righteous to this decision, then you will be able to accumulate the things you want over over your lifetime. Mm. Now, if you sign your name on something and you de- you have you make the decision to sign your name on something, but you're not righteous in upholding it and, and upkeeping your obligation, then you will end up like that said family or that said example over there. Mm-hmm. So I teach in examples because a lot of times the verbiage of financial literacy, they're not going to understand right now. But if I what I do is like my nephews, I attach it to decision making skills and give them examples. Financial literacy is about making the right decisions when you become an adult. With every, anything you sign your name on, you gotta have, you gotta take responsibility. You gotta own it. You gotta own, you gotta own anything it. you take you, you put your name on. Then that's how you're gonna optimize your finances in the future and be able to get whatever you want. So I will always relate it back to decision making skills because if you if you think right now, if anybody can look at themselves and think right now, you're at this exact moment in life right now because of the decisions that you have made. Mm-hmm. So it all boils down to decision making skills. Then. As they get a little older, I go into the details of, you know, APRs and credit cards. Once you get this, how to pay it. But first, it all revolves around your decision making skills. Whatever you put your name on, you got to own it. You got to be righteous in repaying that debt some type of way. Yeah. Uh, Decision making skills. I mean, and I think that might be the initial starting point because a lot of times I see, especially when when I'm circular, circulating in our communities, you know, um, we just have bad habits of, you know, and I, you see people seven, 10 years in of bad credit. And it's like, why do we constantly make these repetitive decision-making, bad decision-making skills? And how do we, you know, kind of get ourselves up out of that uh, collectively as, as a, a community? But I guess we need more Alonzo Roberts floating around um, teaching people it all starts with your decision-making skills. It just, it just, that's the, the starting point. Um, you know, and, and, and then I think it takes a certain amount of humbleness to say, you know, Alonzo, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Can you help me out? And that kind of goes into another thing that you were talking about on your IG about we're shooting our shot at the wrong things. We're, we're, we're kind of directing our conversations, our focus in the wrong area. So, you know, if you could kind of go over what you were saying about the shoot your shot thing, because I think that was a phenomenal point you were making. I mean, um, I I direct that conversation to, you know, men in general. Um, mm-hmm. We're chasing the wrong conversations. Mm-hmm. We're chasing conversations that are always going to be there. The conversations I chase, 
is the conversations that may only happen once in a lifetime. The opportunity to ask a somebody that's in a um, position that you may want to be in, ask them the questions, ask the right questions. Because one thing I know about asking questions is it's an answer on the other side of it, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to, it's no belief system involved in, in, in knowing. I live in a knowing based system. I know that if I ask a question, then the action is going to be an answer to my question. Mm -hmm. So if we start asking the right questions, we can literally pull ourselves out of any situation that we put up there, we place ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen with, you know, um, I'm 30 years old. So my generation of, uh, you know, we grew up shooting your shot, all the songs about shooting your shot, my generation. Um, you know, it's nothing wrong with shooting your shot, but everything has to be, everything has to make sense. And the certain um where you at right now in your life, your conversation has to make sense based upon where you at right now in your life. If you're not want to be right, if you're not where you want to be at right now in your life, then your conversations have to uh, have to evolve and have to change. If you change the conversation, you start changing the way you think and you start changing your goals just by having um, different conversations. So that's why I encourage I encourage brothers like, hey, man, look, star. If you see somebody that's you see a brother pulling up in a Bentley, you see a brother in a, in a, in a Rolls Royce. So you see somebody in because a lot of times in the cities, you see it all the time. Right. Hey, say, hey, man, I just want to ask you a question, man. How did you get to the point where you're at? Nine times out of 10, the individual is going to tell you because a lot of people don't believe that you're going to take the information and do nothing with it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you happen to be one of those unicorns, uh, which I, I, I pride myself of being a unicorn, if you tell me something, you tell me how you did it, and it's something that I won't want to implement, I'm going to reverse engineer it and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability to apply it to my current business model. Right. So the shoot your shot conversation, um, I actually got some phone calls over that right there. And a lot of individuals were like, man, you know, I kind of needed to hear that today. Mm. Right. Um, for, it was from a, a, a group of people that used to work at the same in the same industry as me, because before I went before I went a full blown entrepreneur, I was in the nuclear power construction industry. I used to okay. build nuclear power plants. OK. Right. So these individuals are. Uh, catching wind to what I'm doing because you know I, I like I said I fired my boss I left the industry alone I'm doing I'm taking control of my likeness and my divine rights mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of individuals like man I, you know I need to hear that I know I need to hear that man I've been chasing the wrong conversations yeah I said those conversations are going to exist always once you solidify yourself as a man your masculine energy and solidify your kingdomship your queen is going to chase your conversations so you ain't got to worry about going to try to chase those conversations you need to be figuring out how to get out the rat race. Ask those conversations, how you get out the rat race? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it boils down to. You're gonna say, you got, you, got two, you got two choices, stay in the rat race or get out the rat race, right? Hopefully you choose something ethical and legal to get out the rat race yes. and not go in, in, in the same paradigm that we have been conditioned to. I want you to have a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Stop chasing the wrong conversations. Don't let your ego get in the way when you see another brother that's successful, mm -hmm. another brother that's looking good, that's, that's, you know what I'm saying, got his stuff together. Don't be, don't let your ego get in the way and you start hating on him. Say, man, you know, I'm going to put it to your side. Say, man, you got a very nice vehicle. You got a very, I see you dressed nice. You got some nice loafers on. How did you do this? Yes. That's me. That's just me, though. But like I say, change your conversation, you'll change your outcome and you'll change your goals. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, let me ask you this. Um, is it realistic or is it probable for a person to say, Alonzo, I just want to work a nine to five um, and I'm going to build my legacy and whatever, just working this nine to five. Is that? It's realistic if that's what they see. See, what I do is a lot of, a lot of coaches and consultants, they try to coach people out of their regular, their, their being average, mm -hmm. right? That's not what I do. I connect to those who want to be an entrepreneur, want to escape the nine to five, want to escape the rat race. That's who, that's who I target with mm -hmm. Alonzo Roberts, the mentor. Alonzo Roberts mentor enterprises. I give business solutions to help grow and scale online businesses through automations and through selling through a system and not through a sales script. So I'm currently helping entrepreneurs be better entrepreneurs and grow as entrepreneurs. I don't go looking for anyone who's not looking for me. I think that's what a lot of people mess up at is that 
they're trying to tell people that you need to start a business, right? Telling somebody they need to start a business. If you go back to the question you asked me about somebody thinking about starting a business, leveraging your credit card, I say, I encourage you if they're already thinking about it, mm. right? I do not encourage people, the regular person is, I don't say, hey, you need to start a business. I think that's bad advice. Gotcha. It's bad advice because this, this is a, it's like blood sport. Right? When you're an entrepreneur, when, you, when, you, when you're fighting for your position, when you're fighting to make a way, when you're fighting yourself every day, asking yourself, man, did I make the right choice? Mm. Am I out here like when you when you think, man, any day I can just feel, I can just fall on my face, my face and be laughed at. It's blood sport. So mm. I will not tell anyone who does not already have the desire to be an entrepreneur. If you do not have the desire to be an entrepreneur and you are great at what you do in your current nine to five and you're great at it, then that's that's okay. It's mm. nothing wrong with that. Like I, I I do not like when I hear these podcasts saying you need to start a business. Mm -hmm. No. The only individual that needs to start a business is, is the individual that's already thinking about starting a business. You know why? Because you cannot, you cannot um, create entrepreneurs. It's already inside them. They already have it. Yeah. I don't create entrepreneurs. I help nurture and grow them. Oh, awesome. I like that. I like that because, you know, the reality is, you know, the world is made up of all types of individuals and some of us are entrepreneurs, some of us are nine to fives and, you know, we should be okay with that. Um, and I like that you don't push that on, on others. Um, I had a quick question before I asked my uh, random question. Um, so, and it kind of ties into uh, what you were saying about shoot your shot and guys, men are asking uh, the wrong questions when it starts to uh, getting their mindset right. Um, but then it also, you being an entrepreneur and coaching other entrepreneurs, nurturing other entrepreneurs, when it comes to partnering, picking a partner, uh, a woman in your life, what type of woman should a man look for if he has this entrepreneurial uh, spirit because he needs a, a strong support system around him and your home life is like your strongest support system. So uh, what, what, what beneficial yeah. aspects for a partner? <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't ask that question. I, don't know. Nah, I, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, like I say, um, I'm, um, you want to go ahead and finish the question? Or no, go ahead. You, you know where I was going. So you go ahead and answer that question. <laughs> Disclaimer. This is my personal views and my personal opinions from the, from the mind of Alonzo Roberts' mentor. Um, so I'm a masculine male, mm -hmm. right? That may go over some people's head, mm -hmm. but I'm very masculine. My, all of my energy through each of my chakras is masculine, mm -hmm. right? So to me, I have to have balance. And the only way I have balance is if my, 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 my spouse or my partner is very feminine, mm -hmm. right? As long as I have that, it keeps me balanced and I can do what I need to do. Now, if I'm with someone that's ego, that, that, that has like a lot of more ambition and drive to push me to do some things I don't want to do, then it's not going to work, right? So the only, re only way a man can find his partner is to absolutely know them himself, yeah. absolutely. You have to do a self-assessment and figure out what type of male are you? Mm -hmm. Are you a alpha? Are you a beta? Are you 100% uh, masculine? Mm -hmm. I'm a mixture, alpha, masculine. I'm mm -hmm. like, I like to consider myself like a type of omega male over all of that because I completely know myself and I feel like it's a divine right for me to be who I'm supposed to be. Oh, and the so only female I could, if a woman totally gets that, then that's the perfect individual. And I'm currently married to the individual. She's, she allows me to walk my divine right, right? And be an entrepreneur and want to build a legacy for my family. Awesome. So if a man is trying to find the right partner, that man first has to know himself. Because if he knows himself, then the right partner will literally fall in his lap. Awesome. He'll feel it. It's a feeling. You got to do a self-assessment. Men have to do self-assessments, Right. If you don't like, you know, the, the, the masculinity, you know what I'm saying? They're trying to kill the masculinity and everything like that. But it has to be 
an equal balance of masculinity in this realm with an equal balance of feminine. Mm -hmm. That's what keeps the earth balanced. True. So you have to have those alpha masculine men who go out and, like I say, get in this entrepreneurship realm. And it's like the movie Blood Sport. We fighting every day. But we still get, you know, we coming in the house, we bruised up, we scarred up. And what we need when we come in the house, that feminine woman is take that rag out, take that cloth out, that alcohol, you know, in the South, who might be some peroxide, <laughs> they have no wounds up. You know, so come in here, baby. I know you had a, I know you had a rough day. Come in mm, here. Let mm. me go ahead and get this right here for you. Awesome. That's what a real full-time entrepreneur, someone who's out here getting it every day, trying to be a legacy. That's probably the only type of woman that's going to understand him. Is a woman that understand her feminine side, gotcha. her femininity. They're one hundred percent aligned with their femininity. And if you find that, if you a male and you listen to me, if you find one of them, man, you about to lock hold to and don't let mm. it go. Awesome. Telling you right now. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And I love that you said. Um, you know, a man must discover himself first. And I think that's where we see a lot of the struggles is people are going out into this dating, trying to find a partner world, and they haven't really taken the time to figure out who they are first. And it's just a whole mess of chaos. So um, I, I like that. And I love the fact that you have found your partner because that allows everything to kind of blossom from there. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing some more fantastic things as I check in over the years. So uh, I'm just kudos. Yes, I, love, I love everything I hear. I love everything that I'm listening to. And I just I'm just, I just love to see my brothers doing things. So kudos, kudos. I'm going to ask you my random question and then I'm going to um, trouble you to tell us how we connect with you so we can get some, some credit learning, some credit learning uh, on. So here we go. We're going to see what we got here. Mr. Alonzo Roberts. Yes, us see. Let's see what we got here. What you chuckling for? How often do you look at your phone every day? Man. Um, to be realistic, not a lot. Oh, okay. If I had to put, if I had to put a, um, a number on it, i say maybe like 10 to 15 times a day. And that's awesome. because I have a set routine, right? I have a set routine that I do. And um, when I do actually like pick up my phone and stare at it, it's because I'm going to a book. Um, I have an app called Audible. So as I'm working, as I'm developing my content, like um, I'm shooting a lot of new content. And, um, everything, all my new gear finally came in. My my mentorship uh, stuff, my oh, hat, okay. my backdrop, um, everything finally came in. So I've been going through a, a content change, and um, so I've been editing a lot of content. But what I do is I listen to books. Mm -hmm. I try to listen to at least three books a week, right? Uh, you can get an Audible. You can get an Audible book, and it may be seven hours. Right, you can start it in the morning and list that book the entire day and be completed with it. Right, so I try to list to at least three books a week. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'm I'm editing content and every now and then I'm checking in on my IG or something like that. But mm -hmm. I don't really get caught up in the uh in the scroll, right? Because if you know how social media is built, you can pick your phone up and hit that search bar and you get lost in the scroll. And now you don't hours through, later you don't went through ten different emotions, right? Because you go from laughing. Then you go from being in your feelings, how you're seeing something, some, something that's making you angry. And then you go to looking at all kind of stuff that's, you know, you just go through an emotional roller coaster, man. And um, what I try to do is I try to keep myself level throughout the day. And I try to put all those other, um, block it, all the noise out and, and put that beneath my feet and, feet and walk on it. So that way I become a, a master of my time because I'm controlling my destiny and I'm controlling my income. So as an entrepreneur, that's why I don't really encourage people to start their own business and go into the entrepreneur realm because you got to know how to master your time and also control your day, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a lot riding on it. So if I'm spending all my time just, you know, looking at everybody else's content and I don't, I'm not optimizing my own content and figuring myself out, that's right? True. So that's why I don't, I don't spend a lot of time on, um, on social media, but I, I, I'm aware that's a difference. I'm aware yes. of what's going on and I'm aware of my target audience. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah, yes, ma'am. So yeah, you know, probably like 10, 15 times a day um, awesome. is when I do it. 
Awesome. Discipline and structure. People don't understand how important having personal discipline and structure is to where you're trying to get to in life. And, uh, you know, like you mentioned, that social media, you can go down the rabbit hole and be, you know, four hours later and be like, what the, I just messed up my whole day, you know? Now you but, mad. <laughs> now you call people like, did you see this? Now I can't believe it. Now you're mad. The reason why I don't really go on, the, on, on off the deep end, because like, you know, when I get when I get mad at something, I, I get like, you know, I don't like to see certain things on social media. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just that type. So I like to keep myself in the in the best mood, the best mindset. You know what I'm saying? Possible. That's all I. I that's all I believe. Controlling my subconscious mind and driving it myself. Not letting nobody else come and drive me to their destination. I'm driving. Awesome. I'm riding shotgun and I'm driving. It's me and me. Awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. You mentioned that you were 30 and um, I love to hear because it seems like a lot of the younger folks are starting to pull back from social media. And I love to hear that because um, it has its toxic elements to it. So, you know, I love to hear that. So, Mr. Roberts, please tell us how we connect with you. You mentioned your rebranding and everything. So how do we get in touch with you? Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, you can you can get me at Alonzo Roberts, the mentor on Instagram, um, Alonzo Roberts, the mentor on Facebook. Um, right now, you can go to alonzoroberthementor.com and you can get access to my financial literacy course, um, the Strategic Bid and Master course, how to your custom blueprint to a 750 plus credit score. In this, um, in this master course, I break it down to you. Um, I teach credit theory, something that's not being like you can research credit theory right now on YouTube and you won't find anything about credit theory. Mm-hmm. Um, I broke it down. Um, in a way that makes it fun to learn about. And then I give you a, um, a blueprint, a roadmap, showing you exactly what type of accounts you need to put on your report, when to apply, how to apply in order to build that 750 plus credit score. Then I also show you how to leverage that and start going to get high limit credit cards. You can then utilize those credit cards to just pay them and prove your family, have an extra layer of security, right? Because the only way um, credit is the only way you stabilize one income, right? Mm-hmm. Having one income alone it's just being on life support. So you have to stabilize that one income by developing good credit. you having some type of safety net, some type of cash in the reserve on demand, right? So I teach you how to do that. Uh, and then I teach you how to um, have another course called the, the Business Funding Blueprint, how to properly structure your business, activate business credit. It's going to show you how to completely structure your business from the ground up, okay. right? Make sure that everything, all your, everything is absolutely sealed up. So when you want to start tapping into that business credit and leveraging business credit to go your company, your business will be properly set up, right? And you can get all that at alonzoroberthementor.com. Um, I also have a uh, automations master course coming out because um, what I do is I'm a business automation specialist um, and I'm a sales funnel strategist. And I teach entrepreneurs how to grow and scale their business without grow, growing and scaling their team by learning how to sell through a system and not a sales script. And I do this by te- teaching them how to completely automate their entire online business. Everything is automated. If someone comes into your sales funnel, the system sells them. It's all automated. All you do is sit back and you just collect the Stripe account. You know what I'm saying? If your product is good enough. Um, I got a YouTube ads course that's also going to be coming out, showing people how to, how to um, funnel custom traffic to their whatever they want to sell, how to go on YouTube, run ads, and point it at who you want to see it. Right? So that's also on the way. In my book, I just got done writing my book. So uh, it's a book for entrepreneurs. Um, it's called Sales Funds Automations That Convert, your strategy guide on how to um, grow and scale your online business in six figures a day without scaling your team. I just finished editing it up last night. So now my um, editor, that's, he's editing everything up for the Amazon store. Right there, I said, you know what? I'm going to let you handle that right there. I wrote everything. I packaged it up how I wanted to be converted. Um, and be perceived by everybody who's going to be reading that. So now I just got to wait on them to edit everything up. And uh, yeah, that's going to be live on uh, on Amazon, man, probably the next week or two. So that's another awesome. thing I've been working on. Uh, I got my book done, you know. So. Awesome. I love it. I love yeah. to see my brothers doing the thing, doing the thing. Because they try to tell us that y'all ain't doing stuff. And I like to show them, nah, uh look, there's one right there. Mr. Roberts, he putting it down. So, yes, man. And I just want to say that um, the financial literacy is one of my businesses under Alonzo Roberts, the mentor enterprises. 
right? So this is my parent company, Alonzo Roberts Mentor Enterprises and Creative Building Academy is one of my businesses, my businesses that I have um, created under my umbrella. And that's solely so that people can stop making excuses, right? So you can start, um, so the blame game can end. I have gave you a strategic blueprint, strategic roadmap. And if you follow that, you will receive a 750 plus credit score. Of course, if you got some blemishes on your credit report, you need to handle those, you know, so I'm not going to direct you on who to go to to get certain negative things off your report. But if you have nothing negative on your report and you want to build a strategic 750 plus credit score and start getting high limit credit cards, then go enroll in my um, strategic bidding master course at Alonzo Roberts, the mentor dot com awesome 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 love it love it love it well i have anytime we talk about uh getting some financial literacy especially into our communities i'm all on board for it i love to hear about it so i love the work that you're doing and uh i just i mean i just i just appreciate what you're doing and the example that you are setting for so many other people i love that so uh, just keep on doing what you're doing and building your legacy and you know, I, but I ain't got to tell you that because you're going to do that anyways. You're just that type of brother. But, you know, you just heard it from little old me anyway. So you just you gave know. me some more energy, though. <laughs> I just I just really I just kind of slick absorbed a lot of energy from you because I see how you've been going. You've been building this this show, man, for a long time. I, you know, I did my homework, my research, my work, my my market research on you. <laughs> billion. So I said, you know what? Let me slide over here and, and, and grab a little bit of this this um, relentless energy that she has. Let me, you know what I'm saying, get a little bit of that right there and apply mm -hmm. it to the model. That's <laughs> right. That's right. We're going to keep on plugging at it. We're going to keep on plugging at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. You know, I take and receive that. So, dear, uh, many blessings to you. We're going to wrap this up. Everybody go check them out. And, I mean, and get some of that knowledge. And we're going to wrap this up with that. This is the end of this episode of The Male Perspective. I'm your host, Lana Reed, and I will see everybody next time. Thank you very much. Thank you.